Welcome to the first episode in a Legendarium series about the beginning of the African slave trade. In part one, Islands of Dragonblood, we will talk about how Henry the Navigator commissioned the explorers who discovered Porto Santo and Madeira. These Atlantic islands would become home to some of the first European plantations worked by African slaves. On March 4, 1394, Prince Henry was born in Porto, Portugal, to King Zhao I and Philippa of Lancaster, the daughter of John of Gaunt. According to lore, Henry's English-born mother found the court in Lisbon a sewer and made it into a convent. Along with his elder brothers Duarte and Pedro, Henry enjoyed a thorough education in astrology, military tactics, and geography. In 1415, Henry and his brothers convinced their still energetic father, King Zhao, to conquer the North African city of Cueta. After several years of war, the Portuguese royal family seized the city. However, rather than trade with Christians, the Muslim merchants who operated the Sahara routes went elsewhere, thus depriving the Portuguese of badly needed taxes. From his Moorish prisoners, Henry learned of trade centers deep in the Sahara and resolved to find another route. A gregarious and generous bachelor, Prince Henry possessed a persistent energy, charm, and open-mindedness that set him apart in the late Middle Ages. He made his headquarters on Cape St. Vincent in the extreme southwest of Portugal. There he built a palace, chapel, observatory, and worker's village. He also recruited cartographers from across Europe, expanded the local port, and made Cape St. Vincent a destination for navigators and mariners. There, Henry shipbuilders developed the Caravel, a small vessel only 60 feet from prow to stern. It included a broad bow, small stern, and three masts with triangular lateen sails. Since winds on the Atlantic blew north to south, sailors could tack these sails to catch the wind and navigate the coast. Over 60 men could cram into these tiny boats. Some of Henry's first voyagers, João Goncalves Zarco, Tristo Vaz Texira, and Bartolomeu Perestrello were blown off course while exploring the African coast in 1418. They endured a terrifying experience, listing in the ocean and at the mercy of the wind. Finally, they found a small island that they called Porto Santo. Upon their return to Portugal, Prince Henry ordered them to colonize the uninhabited Atlantic islands. Another year passed before Perestrello and Zarco observed a dark bank of clouds on the southern horizon. As they explored south, they faced huge Atlantic rollers and cross currents. Finally, they discovered the heavily forested and far larger Madeira Island. Prince Henry, despite never setting foot on the island, became governor of Madeira. The first colonists were family from the Algarve region of Portugal, a land of fishing villages where people worked the sea lanes for generations. Later, the colony took on a cosmopolitan character, as northern Portuguese and Flemish moved in. These colonists, regardless of their origin, worked all year round to clear dense laurel forests, build water channels, prepare farm fields, and explore the coast. In those early years, colonists survived on fish, fruit, and vegetables, but those would not make the colony profitable. The Madeira colonies only made money after the discovery of a lichen-based resin they called dragon's blood. An aromatic and highly viscous substance, it was used to make perfume and varnish. In time, Madeira also produced timber, wax, and honey. These islands would later become home to some of the first European plantations worked by African slaves. 
Henry's older brother Duarte became King of Portugal in 1433. Encouraged by the profits from his brother's colony in Madeira, the new king supported a voyage along the African coast. The medieval imagination populated Africa with all manner of fantastic beasts. They included the rock, a bird big enough to carry an elephant in its talons, ants bigger than foxes, and tribes of people with faces in their chests or two heads. Europeans also imagined people with a single giant foot they used to shade themselves from the intense sun. And worst of all, Europeans believed the Cape of Bojador in modern-day Morocco to be a place where the sea caught fire and men would be consumed by sheets of flame and black magic. They called this horrible imagining the Green Sea of Darkness. With some effort, Prince Henry found a man willing to enter Cape Bojador and the Green Sea of Darkness, a native of the Algarve called Gil Eanes, who had served him as a squire in Henry's household. In his first 1433 voyage, Eanes stopped at the Canary Islands, then went home. Prince Henry urged him to sail again with the words, Make the voyage from which, by the grace of God, you cannot fail to derive honor and profit. Eanes and his men sailed again in 1433 in a flat-bottomed 30-ton bark they had to row most of the time. All the while, they dreaded the sight of mountainous waves or their skin suddenly turning black. As they rounded Bohador, to their relief, none of these things happened. Instead of the edge of the world, they found a calm sea on a desert coast. They found no gold as they had hoped, but they gathered sprigs of rosemary, which gave Prince Henry hope for further voyages. Ironically, Eanes may have only reached Cape Juby, then known to European cartographers, but his men believed they had crossed Bohador. This knocked a hole in medieval superstitions, encouraged other men to explore the African coast, and would one day open the door to the horrors of the African slave trade. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.